Okay, hi everybody. So in this video here, we're just going to simplify uh, this rational expression. Um, you can see we've got a bunch of quadratics here multiplied together and divided out here. So the very first thing I'm going to do when I'm simplifying this is I'm going to factor. I'm going to factor all of the pieces here. So I'm going to factor this numerator, this a squared minus a minus 6. And we're, we're not looking for this to be super difficult or challenging for anybody here. We're looking for factors of 6, negative 6, that differ by 1. That's probably going to be one of your first guests to think 2 and 3. And then in order for that sum to be negative, the, the 3 has to be negative. So there we go. Then in the denominator, I've got this a squared minus 7a plus 12. So I'm looking for two factors of 12 that combine to get 7. And I mean, most of you are going to either go to 2 and, sorry, 2 and 6 or 3 and 4, and you find out right away that it's 3 or 4. Now, but I need the product here to be positive and the sum here to be negative, which means this 3 and this 4 must both be negative. Okay, that's the only way that's going to work. And then I've got a squared minus 2a minus 8, so I'm going to factor that down, and it'll be a and a, and I'm looking for factors of 8 that differ by 2, and you're probably going to see that right away, that that's going to be positive 4, and then, whoops, oh, sorry, sorry, negative 4, that's what I meant to, whoops, now it doesn't want to write here, that's so weird, I'm going to go off to the side here, nope, plus 2, okay, it's dying on me, so I'll just give it a second here, it will come back in just a moment. And then I'm going to have, in the denominator here, I'm going to have to, whoops, see, and there we go. It all comes back. So there's a minus 4 and then a plus 2. Then in the denominator, I need the, the product there to be negative 10 and the sum to be negative 3. Uh, I think, again, we can see that's going to be 5 and 2. But I need it to be negative 5 and positive 2 to get a sum of negative 3 inside there. When we multiply fractions, whether they be just numeric fractions here or, or these algebraic fractions, we multiply the numerators together. And to do that, we just, we just write them up against one another like this. So the implication in between every set of parentheses there that are up against each other is that they're being multiplied together. So there we go. Now I can do some canceling. I've got an A minus 3 up in the numerator, divided by a minus 3. Now that will be equal to 1 as long as a minus 3 doesn't equal 0. In which case, I mean, that means I can't let a become 3. I've got an a plus, uh, sorry, a minus 4, canceling with an a minus 4. That's going to be give me a 1. Once again, as long as a minus 4 does not equal 0, because that will make this undefined. So I'll put it, a can't equal 4. And then over here, I've got this a plus 2 canceling with the a plus 2, which means a plus 2 cannot equal 0, which means, again, a cannot equal negative 2. And so at the end here, I'm left with an a plus 2 in the numerator and an a minus 5 in the denominator. But I got to include with, with it that fact that a cannot equal 3, 4, or negative 2. Now, that's a good answer. That's a good answer, but I'm just going to let you know here that there's, there, depending on where you're at here, there's going to be one other restriction here that they want you to write simply because it exists there, and that's that 5 in the denominator that uh, exists at the end here. This a minus 5 is letting us know that I can also not let a equal to 5, and so the, uh, you will often be expected to write that one too, even though it's sitting right there, and I can see it. The other ones definitely need to be written because they were canceled out there. They're now no longer visible as restrictions in my final answer. I mean, I hope that helps.